we at Dell thinks that we're freaking cutting edge by cutting up the cost so that people are going to buy our shit even better. Oh yeah, this is the shit, man. We're the shit. And what do I mean by shit? It's broken. Hello everyone, this is the PowerEdge SC440, and like I've mentioned, it has a Celeron, oh for fuck's sakes, it has a Celeron D processor inside, so it's safe to assume that this was a budget machine server workstation. Uh, workstation machines are supposed to be Dell Precisions, not PowerEdge, and PowerEdge are servers, fuck. So anyways, to begin in the front, we have our DVD drive that comes with Dell, and Dell are notorious for their optical drive to fail every time, so I'd say this one has an 80% chance of being dead, so yeah. And going down, we have another expansion for five and a quarter uh, inch drive, a three and a half inch drive can go here, or a USB expansion, uh, the USB card readers. But I don't think we have the USB errors in that on the board, so yeah. And of course, speaking of USB, two USB ports at the front. That's it. That's all. That's what you get. At the back, we have our beefy power supply up there. We have what is, I hope, is a gigabit Ethernet. Five USB for empty, one occupied right here for my keyboard. Uh, so we can see what it's got inside. A serial port and a VGA port. There's no parallel port whatsoever. The graphics card down there is a PCI 8400GS. I never thought I'd, say, I'd see one of those, but it's, it was working, so... Going on inside, that's a funny one. So we have the famous latch at the top, but this one is broken. As you can see, the spring is either gone or seized up. So we have to do the entire thing manually. Which a guy like me, I'm aware that it's fine. Um, judging by the Southbridge Intel chipset, it is the older logo, so yeah. So at the top, at the back, we have our 305 watt power supply from Dell with the connector here to install, well, plug in more serial ATA connectors or whatever plugs that goes in there, suit your needs, go ahead. An optical drive here, the expansion's here. And if you pull this down, well, you have to remove the front panel, like I've mentioned, and it is broken. In fact, when I pulled it, it was always like this. And as soon as I pulled the blue thing, uh, these uh, came loose and fell on the table. So, yeah. So, here we have four slots for DDR2, 533, or 667 memory. No more than a gig of stick for a maximum of a total of four gigs can be installed on this machine. If you put DDR2-800, it'll post, halt the system, and bitch at you that well, it's not supported on uh, by a use memory that we like. Eh. So yes, right off the bat, I know that not only this Power Edge is a server, but it's a spoiled brat. So I came with no gigs of RAM and I managed to find a 1 gig DDR2-667 ECC memory stick. Note, I've tried two gigs, uh, the two gig sticks, and they won't go. It'll just beep at you like, like nothing else uh, matters. Now for the lower portion of the machine. Well, we have our big ass heat sink right there, which is cooling our Celeron processor, oh, for fuck's sakes. Right here we have a gaping hole, which really conf confirms what this is to me anyways. This is most likely a dimension, either a 9150 or a 9200 case, and a glorified optiplex-looking front, but really, it's just a dimension frame with a... Oh, I don't know what the guys uh, the guys at Dell were doing. Uh, at the bottom here, the black part right there is an intake fan, which is neat. 
but it's also resting right on top of the primary hard drive tray, which is not neat. Speaking of that, we have up to two hard drives we can install right here at the bottom, and they're a 3.5 inch slot base, so eh. As for expansions and connectivity, well we have our power connector right here, an IDE connector right here for your optical drive, but we also have four serial ATA connectors total, so that's uh, neat, but the system won't. You can have one, two, three, four, no more. So yeah, you're kind of limited anyways. And for server, not, look, not looking good. I was thinking a uh, storage server, but I'm pretty sure that's the best you can do. I, I mean, I have no idea what this thing's supposed to do. Maybe a uh, firewall? Oh wait, no, you have to buy another network interface card. It only has one. But credit where credit's due, it does have an integrated ATI video card with onboard memory for the video card itself. I mean, sure, the graphics card's a piece of shit, but yet again, it's this poor server use, so you're not gonna get gaming out of that at all. And um, like I've mentioned, I'm still not sure what this would be ideal for, but I know one thing for sure, it's a budget machine. Oh yeah. And as for expansion, we have Two PCI slots right here, one PCI Express X1 right there, two PCI Express X8 slots right here, even though this goes all the way up to X16, there are two notches, I'm pretty sure this is also an option for an add-in 2, which gives you the option to display DVI if you so need it. Oh, and yes, you floppy freaks, I didn't forget about you. Here's your floppy connector right there. And for those of you who'd like to have PS2 and another serial port, Thanks to having it plugged in on the board, get bent. It's not there. The connector is right there. It's only artifacts. It's not there. None. All right, now that we've checked everything out, let's give it a spin and see what she's got. So this is the BIOS itself. Ah, typical Dell, typical Dell. So anyways, feel free to pause the video anytime while I ramble around. And this is the Celeron piece of shit. Who the fuck builds a server with this? And this is me giving one gigabyte of ECC 66, uh, 533 megahertz. I thought it was 667. Well, anyways, it's 533 or 667. You want to put an 800 on it? Yeah, sure. It'll post, but then it'll halt you. Halt you. That fucking thing's. Oh, what a picky piece of shit. Anyways, going down date and time. Of course, it didn't keep its date and time. Not surprised. Uh, yeah. Not present. Not surprised. As in drives, no diskette. As in drive, diskette drives or everything are pretty much set to default. We have our optical drive, which is... I don't know if it even works. <laughs> uh, Homeboard devices, everything seems to be normal. Nothing around here. Um, yep, yeah, CPU ID value, everything's fine. The security, intrusion alert, acknowledge. Or you can change it to off. Okay, whatever. Execute disable bit. You need that if you want to run Windows 8 or higher. Keep going down. And you have our server stack here. It's whatever this thing is supposed to be. Event log. And let's see. Chassis intrusion. So it looks like we had some chassis intrusion, intrusion before. Hmm. Lots of it from 07, some from 11, and the top ones are from me. Wow, there's a lot of shit. Okay, we clear that out. Post behavior, see how this piece of shit behaves. Turn it on fast boot, yeah, numb lock, yeah, huh. Set up boot menu, of course. And, uh, yeah, everything's fine. You wanna see me start it up? Alright, I'll just start it up. Well, I don't think I have an operating system. Don't find my DLC, but uh, let's test that, um, ah, the optical drive. Everything seems to be doing fine. Oh, and F12 is PXC boot instead of, well, pretty much the rest. And, of course, you complain, so F1. I love it when they just go ahead and change things up. Huh. Looks like the optical drive is working. Hooray. Well, I'm not going to be bothered installing a French version of XP, so I'm going to wrap things up right now, and I'll give it a score. 
So that's it. This is the Dell Power Edge SC440, and now it's time to give it a score. As for reliability, this big beast gets a nine. It's Dell reliable. Dell are diehards, anyways. To me, anyways, and um, this machine has been pretty robust. Has taken a beating and still works just like it was brand new out of the box. As when it comes to customizability, it is a, a eight. Reason being is that you can put deep ECC or non-ECC memory, but you're restricted at 533 or 667 megahertz memory only. Lower won't work, 800 will post and halt. So that kind of defeats the purpose, right? And as for processors, you can get Celerons, like we've seen here, um, Pentium Ds, Xeons, they'll work on this big puppy, that's for sure. But the reason why this Celeron is in there, well, uh, check out the spec list. The user totally did not understand what a server is. So, two things come into mind. Either A, he used a not legal copy of server, uh, any Windows server actually, tried the beta server 2008, but 512 megs of RAM on the, by that year, that's criminal, especially on the server. Another thing, maybe it could have been used for maybe a replacement office PC, but you would have gotten a much better bang for the buck. Not going for this, but more of like an Optiplex or even a Dimension, because these are these are built for server use. They're not built for well, with the um, end user in mind, you know? I mean, yeah, you can still use it, but there's no sound, there's no, nothing, nothing. You can't even put in a graphics card to do anything. It's server only. You can daily it, but it'll only take you as far as it can. So, in a way like this, it looks like it could have been used as a domain controller or a storage server. Anyways, speaking of multimedia and all that, gaming, forget it, zero. There's no PCI Express, can't expand on that, and once again, it's a server, so this score, even though it is a zero, does not apply to the overall score. Multimedia, once again, it's a zero, does not apply to this machine, does not have onboard audio, nor anything, and it, like I've mentioned before, it is designed for server use, so this score does not apply to the total score. So with that said and done, Big Boy gets an 8.5 out of 10. So if you got any questions, comments, anything I have overlooked or not looked at this particular machine, or if you have that that machine, different specs or same specs, and you want to share a story, comments down below is for you to go nuts. And of course, until next time, stay bold and take care.